Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to this second part of the 747 flap system video. Today we'll be taking a closer look at potential flap system failures and their respective backup systems. This will give you a deeper insight into how the flap system works on a bigger airline jet. Grab those non-normal checklists and let's get started. Bravo 273, you going in our hotel Bravo? Affirmative 273 heavy. Thank you. In the previous video, we talked about the main components of the 747 flap system and their normal operation in primary mode. If you haven't watched that video, please use the link up here. Now, very simply speaking, in primary mode, everything is operating normally. The leading edge flaps move pneumatically and the trailing edge flaps move with hydraulic power. But if the FCUs detect a failure among one of the flap groups, they automatically switch to secondary mode. Then either the leading or trailing edge flaps are moved how? Make an educated guess. <laughs> yes, by electrical power. Okay, let's picture this scenario. You are in descent and you're ready to slow her down to reach the adequate approach speed to intercept an ILS. You, being the pilot flying, command your pilot monitoring to set flaps five, he or she does so, and then this caution message pops up on your ICAS. Flaps primary, now what? In our scenario, the inboard trailing edge flaps did not move into the commanded position. If that happens, the FCUs automatically switch that group into secondary mode, meaning they are now extended by electric motors in the secondary mode. Now this could happen, for instance, if we had a hydraulic pressure loss on system one. But as this is a backup system, they now extend significantly slower. To give you a rough idea, in primary mode, the extension of flaps five takes 30 seconds. In secondary mode, you'll be waiting 3 minutes and 45 seconds. The electric motors are connected to the same gears and linkages as the hydraulic motors are, but are much less powerful and therefore it takes much longer. Just to compare, in primary mode, the entire flaps extension takes 1 minute. In secondary mode, run with electric motors, it's 7 minutes. So you better plan your approach with some extra time as it states in the checklist. Similar to the leading edge flaps with one exception. The leading edge flaps are not mechanically connected with their counterpart on the other side of the wing. So in case the FCUs detect that one leading edge flap is not moving into the expected position, the FCUs immediately switches the entire group into secondary mode. Now this prevents so-called flaps asymmetry as now the entire group moves at a slower speed of the electric motors. Imagine the nasty roll momentum you'll suddenly experience if a leading edge flap would extend at a much faster speed than its counterpart on the other wing. This is the so-called flaps asymmetry protection. But back to our initial scenario. In order for you as the pilot to see which leading or trailing edge flap is moving in secondary mode, the flap position indicator on the upper ICAS switches from primary to secondary indication. So here you can see that the inboard trailing edge flaps are yet to be extended and need a little more time than the outboard ones. Now please understand that in our scenario only the inboard trailing edge flaps are now moved in secondary mode. All other flaps still move in primary mode. And if we manage to re-establish full hydraulic pressure on system 1, the FCUs recognize that and automatically switch back to primary mode. So basically speaking, the secondary mode is the first backup option. The flaps may extend a little slower, but the sequencing and the asymmetry protection is still given and you still use the flap lever to select your desired flap setting, but more on that in a minute. So we continue with the speed reduction. Our inboard trailing edge flaps took nearly four minutes to extend and now you as the pilot flying request flaps 10 by your pilot monitoring. He or she places the flap lever into 10 degrees to 10 and then this happens. The flaps drive caution message appears on the upper ICAS. Now what? 
The FCUs have received a flap asymmetry from one of the flap sensors, meaning the inboard trailing edge flaps haven't moved at all, but the outboard flaps move to their respective position. So let's have a look at the flaps drive checklist. Now for the last failure and backup system, let's reset all our current failures and we are on the base leg just about to turn final and you as the pilot flying request gear down flaps 20 and yet again, ping, the flaps control caution message pops up on the upper ICAS. This is most likely the rarest case of all flap failures. For this to happen, all three FCUs must have failed. Now remember in the first video, I said that each FCU could back each other up in case one of them fails. So quite a few things have to go down in order for that to happen. But yes, it potentially could happen, meaning you now have no control hence the title of the failure, flaps control, over your flap sequence or positioning. Therefore, Boeing placed this small panel next to the gear lever, the alternate flap arm switch and the respective alternate flap selector. So by arming the alternate flap switch, the inoperative FCUs are bypassed and the signal goes directly to the electric motors. The operation is then basically speaking in secondary mode, but this is where it gets interesting. You have no flap sequencing, like in primary or secondary mode, nor do you have a symmetry protection. The entire extension needs seven minutes, as it is yet again just run by the electric motors, no flap load relief protection, and therefore you have to land with flaps 25. So let's briefly look at the flaps control checklist. Also, the flap indication on the upper ICAS changes to the alternate mode expanded flap indication. You would then move the alternate flap selector to extend. Careful, it's not spring loaded, so it's extending the flaps continuously. It's probably better it isn't spring loaded, otherwise you would have to hold that selector for seven minutes straight. You should then use the little white flap position index marks indicating your flap's current position. And then keep in mind your flap lever is set in operative after you've armed the alternate flap mode switch. So no matter its position, your flaps won't move according to the lever. So the alternate flap mode is technically speaking your second backup option in case all your FCUs fail. It's easier said than done because your flap protections are lost and secondly, because the flaps maneuvering speeds on your speed tape are missing too. I hope these little scenarios show you that when it comes to airplane systems, especially regarding flight controls, I have three words for you. Redundancy, redundancy, redundancy. I hope you enjoyed this video on the potential flap failures of the Boeing 747. Trust me when I say all other airliners have to prove similar backup systems to be approved by the authorities. In the final video of the series, we'll be looking at the flap load relief function, which then completes this three-part series. That's it for today. A huge thank you to Cargolux for making this video possible. And here is your normal checklist. Subscribe to my channel, check activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account, check, and perform a touch and go at my website, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe.